Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I had a very good vacation but I thought now it will be time to start uh, with new tutorials. So in today's video I want to talk about stand-ins uh, because stand-ins are a very important aspect for rendering heavy scenes as they are very lightweight and memory efficient. So in this example scene provided from M2A you can see that all these soldiers are uh, the same model and they are used or instanced using stand-ins and I will show you exactly how to set this up to improve your um, translation times and have a less eff a more efficient uh, render so first let's head over to the Arnold page and just have a quick um, information about what stand-ins re really are and how they look so they are scene archives which are provided ideally in as format dot as format and they are read directly by Arnold but you can also use OBJs and all the other formats directly as a stand-in so you can see you, you have several options on them but most important or most interesting I guess are the uh, viewport drawing modes so the, the basic the most efficient is the bounding box and then you can actually toggle to see shaded versions point clouds and everything of your uh, stand-in shape so um, there are a few in important things to know um, how to export them and how to import them and what you can actually do with them and also a limitation is that the object ID won't work with stand-ins they are like a stand-in is um, used or seem like one solid object and not its uh, separate items in it so heading over to Maya um, I've got an empty scene and I first want to show you um, how you would create stand-ins and the most the, the basic thing to do or what you would expect to do is you go to Arnold uh, go to the stand-in menu and click create option box which creates uh, which needs a path to create them so for my first test I will just use a standard OBJ um, and I load that it takes a while because it's a heavy mesh and then you can see this is this is my bounding box of the car so if I toggle the poly wire you can see how it looks like this is my uh, stand-in um, object so if I toggle back to bounding box and I now duplicate this once you can immediately see it takes a while to load and for layout purposes if you would have if you want to do layouts of like thousands of cars you can always see it takes really long to duplicate and translate again so if let's say I want to duplicate those four control D and it takes now a while until I can actually move them because they need to calculate the internal bounding boxes and it takes just a while and this is one thing uh, which is a bit of a limitation um, of using OBJs directly because they are not exported correctly so to do this export properly what you would do is you would um, import the mesh instead of creating an archive directly from it let's say I'll import OBJ uh, number six and now it takes takes a while to import as well so now it is here the car, the full OBJ is split up in all the fancy objects and if I select the top group and I go now to Arnold Stand-In's export option box you have an important um, checkbox which is export bounding box so if would if this would be off it would always need to recalculate the bounding box on, on creation so if you export the bounding box with the, um, with the stand-in it does not need to do that and then also if you have shaders attached to this guy to your main object uh, make sure export all shading groups are on because then all the proper assigned shading engines are um, exported as well and then you have if you have animations you can export um, standard uh, animations as well you can like it's pretty straightforward if you don't know really know what they are they are really well documented in on the M2A page right here so read through this if, if it's a bit confusing but it should be fairly straightforward so if I export this now and I call this, I think it was 5 or 6, let's just write 5, stand in. Exporting that, and now I'm deleting this again, so I have an empty scene. And I go to Arnold, stand in, create, and I'll choose version uh, number 5. See, it's actually, I think I exported the same thing, anyways. So this is now the car, again, you can toggle bounding boxes. Oh, actually, if you if you use um, the S export, you can't toggle these, so this, there's another limitation but well it, it shouldn't really matter so but just have a look if I control D this now it is almost instant 
the duplication or the layouting. So if I can actually group them again and duplicate the whole group like so, shifty, shifty, and you get really lots of cars now. And if I create an Arnold, and if I create an Arnold light now, like a dome light, uh, where is it? Sky dome light, like so. And I always don't like the viewport representation because it's infinite and it's always blocking my things. So I, I tend to go to viewport and change the sky radius to be zero. So it's just not visible in the viewport. Um, and if I hit render now, Arnold render view, and press play, you can see it's almost instant. And they all share the same memory footprint, so there's no um, overhead memory because of all like, these cars. And you can see I have all the detail. Is it's not it's not a lower res geometry. It, it's a real thing, and it's extraordinarily fast. And uh, I never tried to duplicating them in a live render view. But let's see if I can get Maya to crash now. Let's just see if it works. Control D duplicated all the cars, moving them over, and you just have like I don't know how many. It's maybe a hundred more cars in here and you can just see how impressive this is so the next thing I want to show you is um, how you can actually um, use primvars which I talked in my previous tutorial also with um, standards so deleting them again and let's just import a car again Let's go to version 6 this time. Let's see what we have here. And let's say you have a very fancy shader and you're happy with all the things you did. And you want to assign a different shader in a different scene, but you want to keep your, your overrides on them. So for instance, um, for, for the tires, I want to have a different diffuse color. Um, so what you can do, you make sure you select the shape node. If you cl click, make sure you click select again, so it's only the shape here. And then you go to attributes, add attribute, and you write as a, this is a prefix for Arnold M to a constant, always needed if you want to add, uh, assign primvars. And let's call this um, tire um, tire strength. If I can type strength like so. Let's just copy the whole thing. And add this. So now on the shape, on the extra attributes, you have this tire strength parameter. And I want to do this for all the shapes, well, for all the tires. So selecting this, making, making sure I have the same one selected here, and I just paste and I add it. And I select the next shape, select, paste, and add. The, obviously, you could do it with a script to not do it manually like I'm doing now but this should not really matter. So just let me think how it was called, tire strength. Let me just copy this. Right, so now this attribute has a value of zero on the tires. Um, and all the rest does not have this attribute. So that's fine for this basic test. So what I want to do now, I want to export um, them again, stand in export, and I will call them, and make sure this one is on. And I'm calling this version six and then primvar underscore tire strength. Okay, export selection. So it's exported. I'm deleting this again. Arnold create, uh, standing create, choosing the one, the primvar. So that's this one. And let's just for this test duplicate them a few more times just so you can see how nice it works. Create a polyplane for the floor. And Arnold Light and start the render. So nothing changed here. They all have their default shader assigned, and you can, you can see that um, the wheels, there is no difference. So t first, to see a difference, let's just group them and assign a shader to the group. Right click, create favorite, or create new material. Um, if you want to add favorites, you can actually go in this assign new material slot, go to Arnold, um, whatever shade you want to have as a favorite, right click, add to favorites, and then it appears in this top group. And then you can actually do right click, assign favorite, and then they are in here as well. So now this is assigned. And I want to go to the hypershade, like so, and 
hide this guy uh, in and out for this. All right, so this is my surface shader. And what I want to do now to make use of this primv I've just added, I will create an AI user data float. And I make sure you paste the name or make sure it's the same name you, you have written into the um, AS archive, tire strength. And this guy has now a default value of zero, which means whenever there's an object which does not have this attribute, it will assign this default value of zero. So if I'm not mistaken, everything should be black now because the fuse strength is zero on default. So Arnold, uh, render view and start. You see the diffuse is black everywhere. And this is not really what the plan is. So my default value should be one. So everything is uh, the default color, which I, which I have on my shader, which is this color. Um, but then the, the tires have a constant value defined in the as file of zero because the, um, the primva was assigned in there. And you can see that it works as expected. And this is how you would create certain overrides inside of your stand-ins if you want to have more control. And let's just um, start again from scratch. And I have another um, as file. This is from the M2A scenes. Uh, you go to the website and under tutorials, there are learning scenes. And I just opened the robot, wherever it is, here. And I've just exported this using expand export all shading engines as well. So if I would go to Arnold uh, stand in create option box and I go to the object, it is in here, should be this guy. And here's my tiny little robot and I'm sh I think it does not work, it does not. So um, this should be the shaded version of the robot now. Uh, if you go to side view, make sure it's here. And let's just see if we have it working. There we go. Here's my robot. It's hard to tell. It's, I don't think it is actually the proper one. It might be that the light is just too white. Let's just assign a um, HDR to it. So color uh, Arnold. AI image and looking for HDRs. Let's just go to other, I'm not sure, kitchen. Something really basic. Let's just use this one and see if we have some more details. Processing, way, way too strong. Oh, because, yeah, that's a new thing in, in Maya. The default is now it always assumes it's a color space of sRGB which is a bit annoying, so you need to set up your defaults and your render globals and your Maya preferences, where you can actually go to preferences and then color management. And in here, you can actually do overrides. Um, if you import these file types, it should assign a color space to be raw. And let's just reapply rules to scene save. And now this should be on raw. So let's just retranslate. I think we need to regenerate the as file now because it is baked in but let's just first see if it no it does it actually so there we go so now we have the uh, proper um, gamma correction on on the input file type and now let's go back with the IO uh, with the exposure and you can see that it that this is my shaded shaded robot and it is shiny and it is reflective and now if I would just duplicate this several times, you still get the, all the performance of M2A standards. So I'm not sure, 20 times, like so. Let's grow, it's actually more, it's 20, 22, no, 21 times. So I think this is the first one, and then we delete this one. So we have 20 in a row, group the row. And this is more like an, an iRobot scene now. So we have, this is now, if I'm not mistaken, two, <clears throat> 200 robots. Uh, let's create like um, platoons of 200s. And let's just duplicate them in the back. Okay, now it gets a bit more heavy. 
Okay, might be this is enough. So this is now two, four, six, eight, uh, 1600 robots in my Maya session. And if it would be um, original geometry, I'm not sure if Maya would handle this, this amount of geo, not so sure. Um, I don't think so. Um, anyway, so let's hide the dome light, group these guys together, center them in here. And let's actually see if I can render this. If you hit spacebar, it uh, st starts a render view. And you, did you see how fast it actually loads all the geo? It's, it's actually it's instantly, and you have what did they say? 18, 1600 soldiers, and they are all detailed, pretty good actually. Well, it, not good, but it's. It's still impressive, I think. If you if if this is this could have been also cars, and it would still do the same uh, speed. Yeah, and this should just give you an insight on how you guys can create stand-ins for your own scenes. If you have heavy scenes like big environments, and you have lots of trees, for instance, and you want to inst instance them. This is the perfect way to do it, and it's, as you can see, it's it's extraordinarily fast. Um, it's easy to set up, and you get the whole power of Arnold Core. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this more technical side of tutorial, and there will be maybe a few more like this because I don't have the um, the, the assets and textures currently to create proper one proper shading tutorials anymore. But I I'm in the process of creating a few, so be patient. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy. If you liked it, please uh, support me by giving me a thumbs up, sharing this on your social networks, and oh, as always, leave comments below. I, I read most of them and I try to comment. Sometimes I get duplicate comments and I just ignore them. But still, um, I'm always happy to read your feedback. And thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye.